Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You are watching a lesson about Linux run levels and system shutdown and reboot. For me, one of the most difficult aspects of learning a new operating system was the differences in terminology. I'd spent years learning the file names, commands, utilities, and other OS related terms of Windows, and they were firmly ingrained in my mind. The challenge then was to assimilate new information, retain the old, and to make sure that I didn't mix up the two. Linux has its fair share of, shall I say, unique sounding terminology. So when I first heard the term run level, my eyebrows knit together in concentration, wondering what on earth a run level was. I can guarantee you that the concept isn't nearly so intimidating as it sounds. In this lesson, we'll define run levels, and you'll see that there is a similar concept in Windows. We'll talk about the different run level services, the tools used to manage them, and how to easily check and change your current run level. As usual, along the way, we'll do some demonstrations to help reinforce the material. So fire up a terminal window, which of course should be second nature to you by now, right? Ready? Good, let's get started. So what exactly is a run level? Think of it as a mode of operation and Linux has several modes that it can run in. For those of you familiar with the Windows operating system, a good analogy is the Windows Safe Mode, which of course tells Windows to start the OS with a different set of drivers. This is particularly useful when you're troubleshooting a problem with your system. The same concept applies to Linux. It has seven run levels, numbered 0 through 6, and the table below highlights the uses of each run level. The first is zero. As this switches the run level to another mode, it's referred to as transitional. Run level zero powers down the system. One, which you might also see as a lowercase or uppercase s, tells Linux to run in single user mode, which is typically used for system maintenance tasks. Under the Debian distribution, Run Level 2 launches Linux in a multi-user mode with a graphical user interface called X. Let's move on to the remaining four run levels. We have three up next. And under Red Hat, Mandriva, and Fedora, which is fast becoming a personal favorite of mine, and in fact many other distributions, this launches Linux in a multi-user mode or networking mode with a command line interface. 4 is a run level that's unused and can be customized. Number 5 again for Red Hat, Mandriva, and Fedora runs just like level 3, but it adds a graphical user interface called XDM. This is an example of an often used default run level. Then we have run level 6, also transitional like 0, which shuts down and reboots the system. Now that we know the seven Linux run levels and their purpose, let's take a quick peek and see what the current run level is on our test system. Switching back over to Fedora, let's click on Applications, System Tools, and Terminal. From here, we just need to type in the command run level and hit Enter. We see that our current run level is 5 which is multi-user mode with the graphical interface and the N here means that the run level has not changed since we booted the system.
The next command is ntsysv, which is used on Red Hat and its derivative distributions like Fedora and Mandriva. You simply type in the command without options to configure your current run level. Now this is a text mode program, so you use your arrow keys to move up and down and the space bar to toggle on and off. You can also use the double dash level option to specify alternate run levels to configure. Let's take a quick look at that. First, let's clear our terminal window with the clear command. Then we'll have to obtain root privileges again with the su command. And then we'll need to type in nt sysv. And what you see here on the screen is the program. Again, you can use your arrow keys to move up and down and your space bar to toggle on and off. I'm just going to cancel out of here and not make any changes. And let's go back to our slides. That concludes our lesson on run levels and system shutdown and reboot. Let's review what we've covered. Run levels was a confusing concept for me at first. Lots of commands, lots of options, and initially no idea when I'd really use any of this. But administrators will find that they rely on run levels quite a bit. Usually any system administration duties you need to perform will need to be done in a mode where minimal resources are loaded and users aren't connected to the network, or as we learned, run level 1. In this lesson, we learned that run levels were a mode of operation, similar to Windows Safe Mode. We talked about Linux's default run levels and services, and how to manage them both from the command line and with other utilities. Certification candidates should ensure that they've memorized the seven run levels and their purpose, how to change and set the default, and otherwise manage run levels and their contents and locations of a knit tab and the sysv startup scripts. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.